So thank you very much for the opportunity to, to present this paper, Internal Migration and Life Course Transitions in Brazil. This paper is the result of the main results of the PhD dissertation by uh, Reinaldo Santos. He's a researcher at the Center for Regional Development and Planning in Brazil. Alison Barbieri is an associate professor in the same place and was the chair of the committee. And I was one of the members of the committee and I guess they liked some of my comments and they put me as a co-author here. Um, so the main objective of this paper is to investigate associations between, oh my, it's just to, uh, investigate associations between life course transitions and age pattern of internal migration in Brazil. We know that physical and socioeconomic contextual changes affect migration levels. And on the other hand, we, saw, we also know that behavioral dimensions in the life course affect migration patterns. And as several, several papers have been done uh, in Brazil regarding internal migration, but they usually focus on the specific topics of life course transitions. And so we go beyond this previous analysis by analyzing several life course transitions and also by estimate, estimating migration flows for different geographical scales. And why we focus on internal migration? Because internal migration flows have great magnitude in Brazil. Between 2005 and 2010, more than 4 million people migrated among the 27 Brazilian states. And we have enough data to estimate subnational migration flows in Brazil. On the other hand, international migration did not have a substantial impact on population size and structure. Between the same period, there were 300, little more than 360,000 immigrants going to Brazil and 336,000 immigrants leaving Brazil. So a really small net migration of individuals within this period. And, um, when we talk about life course uh, transitions and migration, it's good to use this framework here developed by Bernard and, and co-authors about the influence of contextual factors on proximate determinants of migration and then having the final effect on migration outcome. So we have these major contextual factors, social, economic, demographic, cultural, religious, that influence specific life course transitions of people entering the education system, completing education, entering the labor market, getting married, having child, getting divorced, children departing the household and retired. And we focus specifically on these four life course transitions highlighted here in, in red and trying to understand the influence or the association with migration age profiles. And just to talk a little bit about migration age profiles, I just go back to the mathematical equation proposed by Rogers and Castro, in which he has this equation with several parameters to model migration rates by age. So usually you have migration rates that oscillate a lot across different age groups. And with this mathematical equation, we estimate the more smooth migration rates by age. And we have several parameters estimated with this equation. It's a complicated equation, several parameters, but previous studies have been saying that we can focus on two major uh, um, indicators from this curve. One of them is a measure of migration intensity, which would be this uh, point here in the vertical axis, which is the highest value of the migration rate by age and the measure of high peak of uh, high peak age. That's the age in which we have the highest migration age. And we, in this paper, we also focus a lot on this uh, jump measure, the B measure, which is the difference between the migration rates of young adults and migration rates of adolescents. So the difference of these two migration rates here is the jump B. And we try to test six hypotheses. The first one, we, we, may, we hypothesize that there is a stability in the migration age profile over time in Brazil. In terms of attraction of workers, usually economic dynamic regions attract more workers compared to out migration from the same regions. In terms of different geographical scales, 
auto migration profiles from varying territory scales have different levels, but not different patterns. In terms of gender differentials, mean age at labor force, uh, we expect it to be higher for males compared to females, reflecting differentials of age at first marriage. In terms of migration status, we expect that there are differences in the time and spread of life course transitions between migrants and non-migrants. And we also expect to have an association between average ages of life course transitions and the modal age of migration. So we use three demographic census from Brazil, 1991, 2000, 2010. We estimate migration flows for different uh, geographical scales. And the main migration information is about residents exactly five years before each census. We evaluate age patterns of migration with the Rogers and Castro model that I showed before. And we estimate the mean age at transition using the proportion of people who made the change from one age group to the next based on each one of the census, as well as the expected proportion of the hypothetical cohort that we experienced the transition. And as I mentioned before, we will focus on these four life course transitions and we investigate the time prevalence and spread of migration on, on these life course transitions. Just to show Brazil a little bit, we divided for the, uh, the regional division that we use for Brazil for the inter-regional migration, we divided in the six regions. Usually in Brazil, we do the analysis for this, the state of Sao Paulo and what we are calling here this east region. We have this uh, two combined, they are usually, it's called southeast, the southeast region. But here we divide them and put Sao Paulo by itself because Sao Paulo is a major a uh, state that attracts internal migrants in Brazil because it's a more developed area. So we divide Brazil into six areas. In terms of the results about the hypothesis one, in terms of the profile stability, we observe stability in the migration age profile over time. So over time, for example, the inter-regional out-migration rates for women uh, for the Midwest, they do not change as much over time. Also within the Northeast, and the South region, we see a little bit more of a change of migration rates being postponed to a little bit later, uh, later ages. Overall, we see lower differentials by sex for inter-regional migration compared to inter-regional migration. But age, the age profile of migration is not similar for all regions throughout the country. And that we see, for example, in those graphs here. For example, the Midwest, most of out migration we see rates of children migrating in the same similar level as what would be their parents. And Northeast, which is a less developed region in Brazil, we have a lot of people leaving, getting out of the Northeast around labor ages. So these people from the Northeast usually go to the state of Sao Paulo. It's a major uh, place that they go to, major place of uh, destination. So we see different patterns of out-migration across regions in Brazil. In terms of attraction of workers, Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo has historically the highest levels of economic development and dynamism among the six analyzed regions. Sao Paulo has been the main destination for migration flows in the country with the concentration of young adults, uh, exactly people looking for jobs. So we have lower rates for children going to the state of Sao Paulo. There was a reduction in the level of inter-regional migration in the last decades, but Sao Paulo and the Northeast region were the only areas increasing participation in inter-migration flows compared to intra-regional flows. And what has been interesting is that out-migration from Sao Paulo increased compared to in-migration, especially people now moving from Sao Paulo to the Northeast. This is probably due to the growth of return migration of people who migrated previously from Northeast to Sao Paulo now going back. And this is just an example to show uh, in migration rates in dark gray and in orange, the out migration rates for Sao Paulo, men and women in different years. And you see that in migration, usually people moving from Sao Paulo more concentrated in labor ages, but when they get out of Sao Paulo, you see higher uh, rates for children as well. So that is an indication that children are moving with their parents out of Sao Paulo. The hypothesis three, 
We estimated flows for several uh, territory scales, as I mentioned before, and as expected, the results indicate similar migration patterns across different territory scales, but migration level is higher among smaller territory scales, of course, because shorter distance, it's easier for people to move, so you have a higher level, but the patterns are similar. And one thing that we also uh, analyze here is this negative association between the level of migration measured by the gross micro production rate. So higher here, we have higher levels of migration. And these dots here are usually for migration among smaller territorial scales, shorter distances, people migrate more. And we look for the association of the level of migration with that jump B measure that I mentioned before, which is the difference between the migration rates of adolescents and young adults. We want to see that there is a gap between them. And we see that for shorter distances, we have higher levels of migration and then lower differences among the rates of young adults and adolescents. So shorter distance, all the household moves together. But what is interesting to see is that for women, the, the jump is higher than for men, exactly because there is a higher difference between the rates of uh, adolescent females and, uh, and young adults females, exactly because they, it seems that the life course transitions when they get married, when they, they, they enter into the labor market, that's when they usually have higher chances to migrate. So you tend to have a higher jump on the Y axis here in this figure. In terms of results for uh, the hypothesis for uh, uh, gender differentials, the mean age at labor force is higher for men in short distance migration, which is similar to the mean age at first marriage, the differentials here between the ages in which men and women marry. And the differentials is this dashed line here and the axis, the vertical axis on the right is related to these differences here. So it can be above or below zero. In this case, it's always above zero. And long distance flows, they usually have smaller differentials by sex, which is not really related to mean age at first marriage, we, and is more related to labor market patterns. When people move far away, usually women and, and men have the same chances of migrating. So these patterns to long distance migration, we don't see as much of a difference in the mean age at labor force among men and women. Hypothesis five, uh, in 1991, differences between migrants and non-migrants were greater across the life course transitions. In more recent years, there is a convergence in indicators of life course transitions, but migrants tend to transition to first union before non-migrants. And female life course transitions happen faster compared to the male population. Women have greater migration rates for short distance flows. And a possible explanation for that is that women have a more rigid social role in the country uh, associated with inter-household gender inequalities, limiting their long distance migrations. Ernesto, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah. You I have one hear. minute. I've been trying to, to, I will text people in the chat. We have up to 15 minutes. Sounds so, good. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's hard for nope, me to no worries. here. I'm almost done. So, and finally, the, the results for the last hypothesis, the mean age at transition. In previous decades, migration rates were higher and more dispersed, dispersed by age groups. More recent, recently, migration flows have concentrated around model ages. For this example here, for women, the model age of migration is around 21 years. And this model age is closer to the transition of first marriage, first union. So usually people, in this case, women, they migrate close to the age in which they get married. So the life course transition more strongly associated with migration seems to be first marriage union for all these different years here. And these are the other life course transitions that we are looking in the, the analysis. So, so just some final considerations. The results indicate associations between migration life course transitions. There is a strong association between migration time of first marriage, exactly this previous graph. And for women, these associations are even stronger. Difference, a distance between areas is an important factor to understand migration. 
And what we try to contribute here is to uh, in, uh, estimate several migration, apply several migration techniques to a developing country and using census data, cross-sectional data, without the need to collect longitudinal surveys. And one interesting outcome is uh, Reinaldo Santos, he was able to develop this application to easily model migration rates with the complicated mathematical equation from Rogers and Castro. And you can do it really easily just inputting the migration rates by age 